Hello, my wonderful students. I have a wonderful surprise for you. This is a read aloud that we will be drawing some information from for our Thanksgiving research journal in our section on pilgrims. There will be a couple of these. This is just the first one that has a lot of wonderful information. And joining me here tonight, I have a special guest who saw these books and went, I love these books. So she's going to be listening in while we read it. A special guest. Oh, special guest. Where are you, special guest? Oh, there she is. So Lynn's going to be off to the side here. I want this dress just for Oh, you. she wanted to be dressed up and look so special just for you guys. So let me switch and share my screen so that you guys can see the book. And we'll share. All right, so we have our book that is not auto-focusing. There we go. There we go. Sarah Morton's Day, a day in the life of a pilgrim girl. And it's written by Kate Waters and photographs by Russ Kendall. Now photographs, that's different than illustrations, isn't it? What is an illustration? Yes, special guest. Um, an illustrator is a person who draws the picture. Oh, they do what? How do they make the pictures? They draw them. They draw them, paint them, sketch them. But photographs, how do we take photographs? Yes, special guest. Like you take a picture with a camera. camera, which means very similar to a video we watched the other day in class. We watched a video about a family of Native Americans that they will sometimes dress up in their formal cultural clothes and reenact or show what it was like way back when. So this is similar to that. They have people who dress up similar to how the pilgrims dressed up and they walk through what a typical day would have been like. Now for the adults, it might have been a little bit different. So this is a children's perspective. So this is what a pilgrim girl, she looks like she's maybe around seven or eight years old. So not that far off from your age, what the kids would have been doing. Okay, so Sarah Morton's day. Oh my, look at that. Their houses look very different to what ours look like now, don't they? Oh, and is that, oh, that looks like water. And that makes sense that they would have, special guest says, cool. <laughs> that makes sense because they would have landed very near the beach and they wouldn't have been familiar with the area, so they would have picked that spot to live. So let's see what a day in the life of the Pilgrim Girl would have been like. November 12, 1627. Wait, it's 2020. Alexa, what is 2020 minus 1627? 2020 minus 1627 is 393. 393 years ago. Oh, wow. 393 years ago. Let's read what she says. Good day. My name is Sarah Morton. My family sailed to America four years ago on a ship called the Anne. We came to seek freedom from the Church of England. First, my family settled in Holland, where I was born. Life in Holland was hard for us, so we set sail for 
the new world. My father died that first winter. This spring, Mother Mary <coughs> Goodman Kempton. Oh, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. This spring, Mother Mary Goodman Kempton. I am learning to call him father and I'm trying hard to earn his love. Come thee with me. Let me show thee how my days are. This is my village. It is called Plymouth Plantation. Oh, wow. So there's the ocean. That looks like a small little stable and some fencing. Maybe animals roam around there. And those look like the homes. Oh, is that a sheep or a goat? I think I see tiny little horns. I think that's a goat. They would have gotten great milk and cheese from a goat. Cool. At sunup, when the cockerel crows, I must get up and be about my chores. I put on my overgarments. First step, petticoat. Let's see if I can zoom this in so it's a little easier to see. There we go. Step one, petticoat. Step two, stockings. Step three, garters. The garters would have held up the stockings. Step four, petticoat. Step five, petticoat. Another one. Step six, a waistcoat. Looks like it's what we would call a jacket. Step seven, coif. Oh, that's what she's tying to keep her hair covered. Step eight, apron. I bet that would keep her the front of her dress clean. Step nine, pocket. Looks like a purse, maybe to carry some snacks around. Step 10, shoes. Oh, those shoes look very different from how our shoes look. And roll my bedding into the corner. So that means they had to take their bed out and put it away every day. So their beds were a little different than ours. My bed doesn't get moved anywhere. Does your bed get moved anywhere? No. Does your bed get moved anywhere? Huh, that's very different. And the mattress even looks different. Hmm. The fire is mine to tend. I throw brush on the red coals to make them dance. Mother and I make the hasty pudding. Hasty means fast, quick. I lay the table with clean bowl, cloths, bowls, and spoons. I serve mother and my new father first. I must stand at my place to eat. Perchance my new father will make a stool for me. Oh, so if they didn't have a chair, couldn't sit in it. Oh. With the table scraps I have collected, I go out to feed the chickens. Because I have forgotten to latch the pen, I must run our hens a game of chase. Looks like she had to get them back into the chicken area. Oh boy. At milking time, I find my best friend, Elizabeth Warren, at the pen. As we milk, we tell each other secrets. Today, I tell her of a dream about my real father. I miss him often, but I do not speak of him to anyone save Elizabeth. I do not wish to seem ungrateful to my new father. Elizabeth likes to remember the time before she came here to the New World. She tells me of shops in England full of colored ribbons and of fairs with women dancing. But they had to go to the church that the king decided everyone should go to. They could not go to wherever they wanted to. After milking, I muck the garden to make it rich for planting next spring. The muck is heavy and I must often stop to rest. 
Hurry along, Sarah, mother calls from the door. Oh, Mary, I am caught idle again. I am to pound spices this day. Our house will have a pleasing scent. Thump, thump of mother's churning keeps me company. She is churning. I wish I could tell mother about my dream, but she is quiet today. And I have often enough gotten the rod for speaking out of turn. Next, mother and I prepare the midday meal. And here's a recipe for 17th century Indian cornbread. Ooh, how they would have made it. Boil three cups of water, stir in one cup coarse cornmeal grits. Simmer until water is absorbed, stirring occasionally. Cool, like let it cool, until let it sit until it's not hot anymore. When mixture is cool enough to handle, turn onto work surface floured with half a cup fine cornmeal flour. Work into two round flat cakes. Bake on floured cookie floured, floured cookie sheet at 400 degrees for three quarters of an hour, so 45 minutes. So this is what it would, the bread would have looked like that Sarah made, but it probably would not taste very good to us today. We put things like butter, there's a little bit of salt, sometimes there's a teeny bit of sugar in there, yeast, which helps give it lots of fluff and body. So, but they didn't have all those things. Well, they had sugar, but it was very expensive. They could have gotten butter, but it was a lot of work. Oh, and there were no eggs. They didn't add any eggs in here either. If you didn't have chickens, you didn't have eggs, and chickens were expensive. So you made do with what you had. When my new father comes home from dinner, he seems pleased with the rich pottage and warm Indian cornbread that we have made. Oh, that looks like a turkey and the porridge, boiled cabbage maybe. Oh, huh. hmm. that seems like a pretty balanced meal. You've got your vegetables, you've got a protein, you've got a starch. Yeah. What's a starch? A starch like a potato or a bread. Uh, yeah. Just in case you guys wonder. <laughs> Thank you, special guest. After dinner, it's time for my favorite task. I draw vinegar to polish the brass. If I am patient and rub the salt and vinegar slowly, the kettle will truly shine. Of a sudden, I hear a warning shot from the meeting house on the hill. Probably a shot from a gun, maybe, or a cannon. It means a ship has been sighted. Perchance we will have some visitors on tomorrow's tide. I pray that they won't be people who wish us harm. Mother says, I may fetch Elizabeth. We run to the top of the hill to see the ship, but it is still a tiny speck at sea. I dare not wait to see more. It is time for my lessons. My new father thinks I show a talent for learning. I'm grateful for in many families, girls are not spared from their chores for lessons. My fingers are clumsy around the chalk, but it gets easier. Someday I may be able to read mother the letters she gets from her relations in England. After the lesson, Elizabeth is waiting for me. I show her my new father's gift. He has made me a knicker box. What's a knicker box? Knickers are what they called their underwear, but they didn't look like our underwear today. They looked like really long, loose shorts. But still, having your own place to store your clothes, that's a pretty special gift. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. Oh, wait, maybe that's not what a knicker box is. It sounds like it's a game. Huh which is confusing because they really did call underwear knickers back then. I'm learning something too. Elizabeth and I take turns shooting. We keep score with scratches in the sand. 
Today, my marbles go through the arches more truly. Hers bounce back to her. So it looks like there's some little archways and they would drop marbles. And if it goes through one of the archways, maybe it gets a point and scratches in the sand. I wonder if that's what we would call tallies. I am winning, but the sun is beginning to lower and I must get back to my chores. How interesting though. Games, they played games. I feed the fire to heat the pottage again and milk the goats once more. <gasps> goat's milk is so yummy. The big brown goat is troublesome. The more I push, the more she kicks. I will have a mark to show from her tomorrow. As I return from milking, my new father is coming home. He has news of the ship. It carries visitors to our village. There is much talk about where to lodge them and how to portion out the stores. They would have saved only a certain amount of food for who lives there. We got to share with guests. After we have eaten, my new father quizzes me on my verses. What kind of verses do you think? Bible. <gasps> Bible verses. Because even though they may not have wanted to be forced to worship and have the religion of the Church of England, that doesn't mean that they didn't love God. So they just wanted the freedom to choose. I have been learning this one by heart since last Sabbath. It has words to turn my tongue into a knot. Oh, Psalm 100, a psalm for confession. Shout ye triumphantly to Jehovah all the earth. Serve ye Jehovah with gladness. Come before him with singing joy. Know ye that Jehovah, he is God. He made us and not we, his people and sheep of his pasture. Enter ye his gates with confession, his courts with praise. Confess ye to him, bless ye his name. For Jehovah is good, his mercy is forever, and his faith unto generation and generation. This evening, Father is pleased with my learning. He hugs me with pride. Perchance he does like having a daughter. Hmm. Mother calls for me. We set off for the spring to fetch water for tomorrow. We look out to sea and see the ship. Perchance mother will have letters and a bolt of new cloth tomorrow. Now there is time for quiet conversing. Mother speaks first. She asks how I am liking my new father. I can truthfully say that I am becoming fond of him. It has been many months since I have seen mother seem so glad. The air gets chill as we fill our buckets. It is getting towards sundown. The village quiets as we turn homeward. Father and mother talk in the candlelight. I bid them good night. I get my bedding ready and put my overgarments in the chest. Oh, not a dresser. But a chest, probably like a hope chest. Hey, Lynn, did you know that your grandma has a hope chest? Yes. And guess who else has a hope chest? You. I do. Hope chests were very special, like big boxes. That you keep and, your memories in. Well, not just memories, but young girls, they would, when they were engaged or promised to be married, they would make their wedding dress. They would make um linens and towels and things for their new home because she and her new husband would get their own home they needed to have things so and she would keep them all in there though i am almost grown i tell the day's events to my puppet i tell her about the ship in the harbor winning knickers from elizabeth and my dream and best of all, 
I tell her of my new father's pride in my learning. It has been a fine day. I say my prayers and thank God for his bounty. Fare thee well. God be with thee. Very small, very humble bedroom. Oh, very cool. Oh, and here are some other books written by the same author. Oh, very cool. Well, that was really, really fun. I thought that was an excellent book. And what a neat perspective of what life was like. Oh, that was really, really neat. Scholastic makes some really good books. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you need to, watch it again and think of some things that we can put on our pilgrim chart. All right. See you next time.